Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. You guys have requested one of these update videos once a month, so here we are again. This video is being made a little bit before uh, the end of the month. I am trying to do a little bit different this time. Instead of just telling you everything I have and showing you, I'm going to give you the backstory on each one. Uh, not all of them have a backstory. I do not know the backstory on all of them. Uh, some of them I've just bought from scrappers. People that are going to part them out and they don't have a backstory or they don't know the backstory or they don't care. And uh, they're just in it for the money. For a collector like myself, I like to have a story and I know a lot of you guys do also. We are going to try to go over all of my garden tractors today. And uh, hopefully I don't forget anything or miss anything or leave anything out. But uh, stay patient and uh, I hope everybody enjoys this video. It's going to take a lot to make and I'm sure it will be a long video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Number one on the list, this is a 1970 John Deere 140 H3 patio. Here's the serial number for you guys. Serial number 024490M, type code T0584. This is one that I do not have much of a backstory on. Uh, I met a guy at the Classic Green Show in 2021 in Columbus, Ohio. And at that point I was looking for some patio tractors. I think I only had one, maybe two. And uh, he said that he had some patios that he would sell me for a decent price. Uh, the first one was an orange H3, which I no longer have. It was a 69. And when I went up to get it, I saw a bunch more and struck a deal and went back to get them. This was one of those tractors. Uh, it did not have the hood or seat on it when I bought it. Those came with a different tractor, and I just set them there to... Uh, have them somewhere out of the way, I guess. This tractor was in his parts row. He told me that he didn't know much about it, but it was in the beginnings of a restoration. He didn't know anything else about it. I guess he was told that this engine was supposed to be gone through. I did confirm that it was not, though, so I'm not sure if he was confused with another tractor or what. But this tractor was out of a parts row. I don't know where it originally came from. I bought it from up by Michigan. And uh, I'm just going to continue using it as a parts tractor. I did get several others from him. And uh, we will go over those as we get to them. Number two on the agenda. And I have no backstory on this tractor either. Uh, this is a 1966 Cub Cadet 122. Uh, the serial number is inaccessible. It is under the seat on top of the transmission. You have to take the whole fender pan off. We'll put it uh, down here at the bottom. You're seeing it now, or I'll put a picture or something of it. I bought this tractor, and uh, the guy had bought it and just parked it in his backyard and didn't know anything much about it. He was a cub guy, but... He said each one interested in this tractor, and so it just sat. Other than that, I have no information whatsoever on it. This is a 1971 John Deere 120. It is not a patio. This is my green tractor. Ouch. Serial number is, uh, I think, I don't remember. Here it is, 8319. Type code T0571 meaning it is a green tractor from the factory. I'm going to be restoring this one before too long. I bought it down south somewhere and I don't remember where the heck I bought it exactly. But I bought this tractor, I believe, from approximately the third owner. It was what I would call a postage stamp special. All this tractor ever did was mow grass its whole life, and obviously I put these tires on it, it had the turd tires on it. I did the hood also. It was broke. 
Uh, it came with a 39 inch mower deck, which I do have. I'm going to rebuild and put on this tractor when I restore it. Uh, this tractor had sat in a barn for the last 10 years as of when I bought it, probably two years ago. And the man I bought it from got it, I don't know if it was free or just dirt cheap from a friend because he needed a lawnmower and he could not get it to run right. I was actually supposed to be buying it running, but he couldn't get it to run right and it wouldn't run when I picked it up. So we just pushed it in the truck. Uh, I don't really know much else behind it. Uh, he said it was just given to him by a friend. I'm not sure if he meant cheap or free. It is not original paint. You can see that the repaint is peeling and before I sanded and did the hood, you could really tell that it was repainted. I mean, I pressure washed it and a lot of the paint came off. Uh, so it was just a mowing tractor all its life and that's all I plan to do with it. Maybe hook a trailer to it or something, but uh, Otherwise, it is just going to be a mower. Uh, I probably won't mow a lot with it, but uh, that's what I'm going to rebuild it to do is mow. This is my 1974 140H3. I bought this tractor approximately, oh, probably three years ago now. And when I bought it, the engine was blown up. I bought this tractor because I was looking for my tractor that I called Bug Eyes. Well, John actually named it that. It was a 140H3. I thought it was a 74. Uh, it was the first one I bought. So cut me some slack. It was actually a 73. I couldn't find it. I'd been searching for years. I didn't know the serial number of it. So I bought this tractor thinking, well, I'd at least like to have another 74. Bought this tractor and started rebuilding it. Like I said, it was blown up. And then I found out that uh, wrong year. So uh, when I got this tractor, I bought it from a guy uh, up north a little ways. And he was using it to mow his yard. And the head gasket was blown on it, so it was burning oil. And he let a friend of his use it to pull his log splitter. And uh, I guess neither of them was smart enough to pull the dipstick and check the oil. So they blew it up. Um, he was not sure if he wanted to fix it. And I had posted in the 140 group looking specifically for a 1974 140 H3. So he got a hold of me, told me, this is what I have to have for it. And uh, well, it was kind of high. I was not having much luck finding another 74 140 especially close by this thing was like half an hour 45 minutes away from me here is the serial number serial number 057301 type code is T0586 I rebuilt this tractor about a year and a half ago and uh, painted it just over a year ago we are currently at 50.9 hours on a completely rebuilt 14 horse Kohler. I do have all the videos on this on my channel also. I put the tires on again. This had turd tires when I bought it. Uh, it did not come with the snow plow. I bought that separately also. I actually picked the snow plow up uh, about two years ago now. Uh, I went to an auction and I actually bought my 420 that I had there and my 72 110 that was original, the one of them that I had for the longest time. And at the end of the auction, I was talking to a guy and he said he had a 318, but he sold it and he still had the snowplow, asked me if I wanted it. And uh, I asked him what he wanted for it and he told me $100 bill. And so I came back down the next week and met him and bought it. And he did all the work to it. I didn't do nothing to it yet. Got new springs on it, new cylinders, hoses. Uh, he put a plastic cutting edge on it. I don't like that very well, but oh well. I need to get a correct one for it. But I couldn't turn it down for $100. I drove down to Columbus and met him and uh, 
came back and I've been using it since. This is a 1970 112 hydraulic lift patio. I got this from the same place I got the 140 from the start of the video, the patio one. Here's a look at the serial number and the type code. Serial number is 180820, type code TO658. When I bought this tractor, it would not roll. The rear end was locked up. It had turf tires also and all the way around. Uh, I don't really end up buying anything with bars on it. <clears throat> I didn't really have the ambition to work on it, so I had this for probably over a year before I even touched it. I had to put a different transmission in it because there was catastrophic failure in the old one. The old one was an LSD trans, which for those of you who do not know, LSD stands for Limited Slip Differential, and they only did that in 112 hydraulic lift tractors from 1969 forward, and they only made them uh, hydraulic lift till 71, I believe. I did get it running and I've started using it. I've been using it for a few years now. I actually went through the trans and I'm ready to put it back in. I just have other projects over in the shop right now. Again, you can go back and look at pretty much all the videos on this tractor start to finish. But uh, I guess the guy's son was going to redo this tractor and make it a pink patio for breast cancer awareness and uh, started taking it apart and that's as far as he got never did anything else and didn't want anything else to do with it so he sold it to me I do not remember what I paid for it I got it in a lot of stuff I got two 140 patios this a 110 patio and a green 140 plus some attachments for a thousand bucks none of them ran none of them were complete uh, I got a pretty good deal on them and uh, this is so far my favorite one out of all of them. But like I said, I don't know a whole lot of a backstory before that. Here is a 1970 120 patio. We'll check the serial number here. Serial number is 002185. Type code is T0572, which makes it a white tractor. I bought this one about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, probably at least two years ago now, actually, possibly even longer. And uh, see here, the guy was from, I think, Delaware, but he was going to Wisconsin to pick some stuff up that he had bought. So he met me on the turnpike here in Ohio. I picked this up for $800 non-running but mostly complete and brought it home and uh, got it running that is on the channel and used it for a couple years last summer I believe or fall I did pull the engine last summer I believe to put in another tractor because it was the incorrect engine in this tractor uh, I would like to restore this one oh in another in the next couple years hopefully I can get to it Again, it was on all turf tires when I bought it. I don't remember where it had come from. It had come from somewhere out west when the guy I bought it from bought it. I don't really know much other backstory. He didn't tell me. Uh, we didn't discuss it a whole lot over the phone. And he was in a hurry when I met him because he was on his way to Wisconsin. When I got it, there was shipping labels on the hood. So the tractor had been put on a pallet and shipped at one point. I removed them. I don't think I ever paid attention. I will see if I have a picture somewhere of the shipping labels, but probably don't. This is a 1971 Gravely 432. I bought this this spring. It was supposed to be rebuilt. I bought it from a kid who rebuilt the engine. Uh, someone else painted it, I guess. 
And he said that it was rebuilt, gone through, he had the paperwork, and it ran great. So I went and traded him a 110 for it and brought it home and found out the governor in it is bad. I don't think he told me anything of where he got it or anything like that. But uh, I did rewire it on a channel and I'm either going to sell it or replace the governor. Still haven't decided. It's been approaching a year. So we'll see. I really do like this tractor, but I don't really have time to replace the governor in it. Here we have a 1970 140H3 patio. This is the second 140 patio that came with the 140 at the start and the 112. Uh, I started restoring this last year. Restoring. I'm going to repaint it. Um, I'm not going to rebuild anything for it because I'm not going to use it. It does have the old style transmission being a 1970. So I'm just going to repaint it, put an engine in it, and take it to shows, maybe drive it around some. I don't plan to use it much, if any. This was another tractor that was in his parts row. It did not have an engine. He did tell me that he was pretty certain it had a pretty good transmission in it. But that was all he knew about it. So I've started redoing it. Uh, these are the tires that came on it. It will get bar tires on the back and probably three ribs on the front when I restore it. I am going to switch it to narrow tires all the way around because I have a set of fronts and uh, the rears that I have for it are 850s. So it'll have 850s on the back still, but I'm going to put the narrow front tires on it. Again, I don't really have a lot of information on this tractor. The serial number is taped over currently and I'm not going to pull it off. So I will put a picture right here for you guys to look at. I have not put any videos up on the channel of this tractor yet. I did not get to it in time last year to get enough footage for a video. So hopefully this summer I'll be able to get it finished. On the agenda is this gravely it's an 8123 uh, the serial number was painted over and scraped off years ago so i do not know the serial number for it i do not know what year it is i bought it because i had a front drive kit on it and some attachments i wanted i bought it this past spring used it for several months and uh, parked it and listed it for sale I actually did not get any backstory on this tractor whatsoever. I bought it from a dealership of sorts. I don't remember what they were selling. It was not tractors. He had it to use around his yard and uh, wanted something different, I guess. Uh, this tractor does burn oil. It's got 2,200 hours on it, but it still runs great on the original 12 horse Kohler. I don't think there's any videos up of this tractor on the channel. I bought it running and driving and uh, only used it a bit. If anybody's interested in it, it is for sale. Up we have a 1986 John Deere 210 garden tractor. This tractor is completely original paint. And it looks pretty good underneath all of the dirt that is on it. Let's get you zoomed in here to the serial number. I bought this tractor from the original owner's grandson. It does have all four original tires on it currently. Turfs on the front, Goodyear bars on the back. I bought it with no mower deck. Uh, I actually bought it for the Bridley garden cart it had on it. And uh, was just going to sell the tractor and then I had somebody tell me that they would buy it if I got it running and put a deck under it so I did just that and then they backed out so it's currently got a rebuilt deck and all that happy stuff it is for sale the backstory that I got from the owner was his grandparents had bought it brand new in 85 it was always barn kept and the Brindley garden cart was put on a couple of years after they purchased it new because 
his wife, the man I bought it from's grandmother, would run into things with it and their previous lawn and garden equipment. So they put that on the front so that she wouldn't mess up the front end of it, which seems to work because it's not beat up whatsoever. He just didn't want it anymore, didn't have any use for it. And so he listed it on Craigslist and I found it and had to have it. So I went and picked it up. This here is a 1971 John Deere 110 patio. I bought this because I was going to try to do a set of 1971 patios. Not going to get to it, not really interested anymore. So I am going to sell this tractor. This is the seat it came with, and it came with a green hood painted red. I did put this correct patio blue hood on it, but I do not have a seat. Here is the serial number. It is 188679M. Type code is T0642. It is a 1971 110 patio. I'm going to sell it now. I sold all my other 71 patios. I had a couple of more. Uh, I just haven't had any interest on it lately. With our current president, everything's so expensive, nobody can afford toys, including myself. So here it sits. I didn't really get any backstory on it. I bought it from a guy who bought and sold, so he did not know much of anything about it. This is a Gravely 812. Do not remember what year. I don't even know if I have the year or serial number of it. I bought this tractor about four years ago and uh, I really wanted an 800 series. I wanted a larger one than this, but uh, I had found this. A friend of mine had it and wasn't sure if he wanted to sell it. And I talked him into selling it. And so I went up and bought it and I brought it home, you know, did a bunch of stuff to it to make it usable. I did not have this tractor a week and I fixed a bunch of things on it, got it usable. I don't think I put an hour on it and the snap ring came off of the rear axle inside the differential and so the axle would just randomly walk out rendering it not usable so it's been parked here since it's going to be a parts tractor when i find a gravely 814 until then it's just going to sit right here and uh, not run this tractor right here is a 1973 140 h3 I will show you guys the serial number in a second. I bought this on a chance that it was close serial numbered to Bug Eyes, which was 54948 serial number. I am still looking for that tractor, by the way. The backstory on this tractor that I got was it was the man's dad's tractor. He used it to mow a series of rental houses he had. And about, oh, 20 years ago, he said his dad took it to the dealer because the transmission started leaking pretty bad and the dealer went through the whole transmission and replaced all the seals supposedly and he said well it was at the dealer his dad passed away and so when they were done he went paid for it picked it up he said it was close to a thousand dollars and he said he mowed with it once and parked it and that's where it had sat since so it sat about 20 years I bought it on the chance that it was close in serial number to the one I was looking for because of the way it looked. And here is the serial number, guys. It is 54236. Type code is T0586. So apparently this transmission has about an hour or two on a complete overhaul uh, of all the seals. I mean, they didn't, to my knowledge, go through anything else unless it was bad. Of course, they'd have fixed it. But all the seals were replaced at that point in time, and then it sat, which is probably bad because now all the seals will be dried out. I bought it for a few hundred bucks to use, or because it was close to bug eyes, and uh, that's as far as I've got. Okay, next on the agenda is 
1975 John Deere 400. I bought this tractor approximately three years ago, I'd say. Serial number is 3380. It's 380th 400 to be built. I picked it up because I wanted one of each model first year of production. And uh, I thought at the time I was getting it cheap. I think I'd give 550 for it. Um, the seat on it was junk at that time. Uh, the tires were junk. There was no three-point hitch. It did come with a mower deck, and it did run. But I had had to put a lot of money into it to get it to this point. Now it is finally usable again. And I've started tinkering with it a little bit. The backstory on this tractor was uh, it had been bought brand new to only mow grass and in the 90s, 2000s or so it was parked because they bought a new mower tractor and it sat right beside the garage outside until I bought it. Uh, the original owners were just going to scrap it but the neighbor was a mechanic so he said no no I'll fix it up get it running enough to sell it and see if we get something out of it so he listed it after getting it running and I was fortunate enough to see it before anybody else did and so I went and picked it up I do not know uh, a ton else about it If I remember right, the original hour meter had like 800 hours on it, give or take 100. Uh, it had sat outside, so it did not work when I got it. So I did put this one in immediately. I did not run it, except load it and unload it before putting that in. So I still have count of the hours. The original hour meter is in the house in a drawer. It was uh, rusted out pretty good. So nothing in it worked from sitting outside for 20 years. I will insert a picture of that right here somewhere. I've done a bit of work to this. I just did a starter in it. I did a bunch of hydraulic work before. And uh, it's now a good usable tractor. I enjoy using it. This is a 1972 Gravely 432. This was one of my more recent videos. I bought it and got it running. I've actually had it for several months, but I've just gotten to getting it running in the last month or two. Uh, I bought it from a man who bought it to part out. I guess it was sitting in a building. Uh, the guy supposedly took pretty good care of it, but he started having some electrical issues, couldn't get it to run, and he parked it up. And so the guy I bought it from, like I said, was going to part it out and decided he would rather uh, sell it to me than part it out. I did trade him a 16G for this tractor and some other stuff. The 16G, I think he just ended up parting out. It was not in great shape. As far as I know, this is fairly good uh, tractor. I mean, it's been well kept. To my knowledge, obviously the front was exposed to some elements because the front top of the hood is pretty rusty. Other than that, it's not too bad. That tire has been replaced. The others are original, I do believe. Other than that, I do not know a ton about it. Like I said earlier, uh, I don't always get full backstories. When people buy them to part out, and then I get them that way. Usually there's no story that comes with it. But uh, I do try and get a story. Uh, usually the guys that buy them to part out just don't give a rat's ass about any story. They don't care. They just want the money from parting it out. So that's why if I've bought them from people that buy and sell or uh, people that are going to part out, somebody that's not a collector basically, Usually they don't have a story behind the tractor.
Next up over here is a 1980 John Deere 317 with a tiller. This tractor is all original paint, original seat, original tiller, all original tires. It has, I think, 853 hours. Yep, 853.4 original hours on it. Here is the serial number. Show number 122677M, tape code C317J. I picked this tractor up two or three years ago. Um, I really only wanted it for the tiller. It was during COVID I bought this tractor. And uh, so I was doing some buying and selling. And the tractor was listed with the tiller. And... It never really had good luck with 317s, but I had had pretty good luck selling tillers, so I was going to buy it, sell the tiller, and then do something with the rest of the tractor. I wasn't sure. It did not have the seat in his pictures. I did not know that it even had a seat. And when I got there, I was talking to him, and he said that he had bought it only for the mower deck. I guess he picked it up from the original owner just for the mower deck for his tractor. So when I brought it home, and he had given me that seat. I'm starting to look it over, and I thought, man, this thing's original. I can't can't separate it. So here it sits. I don't really have the heart to sell it yet. I'd like to get it running again this spring and till with it. I did have to do some work to it uh, when I bought it. The rear PTO was completely trash, so I had to replace that completely and clean up the release valves for the hydro. There is a video of that on my channel. Other than that, I think it's pretty much original. All four tires are original. Seat, hood, grill. Everything is original to the tractor except for the rear PTO. To my knowledge. So, it is a super nice tractor. I did get a hold of the guy I bought it from shortly after and ask him if I could buy the mower deck from him or trade him a good mower deck I had. And he said no, he was not interested in doing that. So, I did not get the deck with it. But, I do have the tractor and the tiller. So, I'm happy enough to have these. I, I've considered selling it over the years, but I'll never find another one this nice original. So, it's still here, and I don't plan to get rid of it anytime soon. This is another original 1980-317. Uh, how you see it is exactly how I bought it, minus the three ribs and front hubcaps. Uh, I did put that set of wheel weights on it. It was supposed to come with a set, but uh, the guy robbed them off before I got there. I bought this tractor because it had weights in his, Craig, or in his marketplace ad and the sleeve hitch. And I kind of liked the big tires on it at the time. I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the dealer sticker on the hood. I just wanted those few things. He had it listed for like $600. And he said the engine was bad, needed valve guides. And so I was able to get a hold of him and ask exactly what it needed. And he told me that it burned far more oil than gas because it was worn out. So I struck a deal with him, and I got it cheaper. I, I mean, with the weights, it would have been a better deal, but uh, I did not get the weights with it like I was supposed to. And I went and picked it up, and only when I went and picked it up did I find out that it did not have the weights on it like it did in the ad. So I did make him throw in a couple of other attachments. I got a disc and a back blade. And maybe something else, I don't remember. So I did buy it for the agreed price. I put those weights on it and uh, these tires because the ones that were on it were shot. When I was there, like I said, I only wanted it for the weights and the sleeve hitch. And then I was talking to the man and he said, or he was complaining that he had taken it to the dealer to do something with the engine when it started smoking that badly because he regularly used this tractor to mow his yard and plow his driveway. 
and the dealership told him, I think he said it was going to be like $2,000 to put a new engine in it. And, of course, at that point, the dealer was putting Onans in these things, so I'm glad he didn't do that. And probably so is he, more than likely. So he said he parked it, and then he was saying how he would be darned if he was spending that money on it. He bought it new, yada, yada. So I did not know that previously. So I did end up buying it from the original owner. He bought it brand new. And evidently it was garage kept or barn kept the whole time because it's in decent shape. Like I said, he did put those tires on it. I do have the original tires and rims over in the shop. Uh, the tires were flat and I put these on it because I wanted to use the tractor. I bought these three ribs used off of Marketplace for like $100. So I was pretty happy with the tractor the way it looks. I brought it home and I figured no way that it burns as much oil as he said. But uh, when I got it running he was correct. It burned a lot of oil. If I started it in this building right now and let it run for five minutes with the old engine in it before getting anything done to it, you couldn't see in this building for 20 minutes. And after that long there was still a heck of a smog in here. So I bought a 317 parts tractor that had been sitting. The guy had used it up until he blew a hydraulic line. And so I just swapped engines. I did get the other one running before I swapped engines to make sure it wasn't junk. But I did swap engines. And everything on this tractor is on the channel from about a year or two ago. I do not remember. I think it's been just over a year. I have not used it recently because it uh, developed an issue it would just randomly lose spark and it was the power to the coil would just randomly be cut i did bypass the safeties that i could find and that helped it for a little while and then it started doing it again i had eventually just given up and ran a jumper wire from the battery to the coil but then it stopped charging the battery so I just parked it. I'm going to rewire it or at least go through the wiring on it some and make it correct and usable again and start using it again. The last time I tried to start it, it wouldn't fire. So I probably lost a prime on the pump or I wasn't getting spark even though I was using the jumper wire. Like I said, you can see all the videos and progress of this tractor on the channel and you will see more in the future. This here is a 1979 John Deere 216 hydraulic lift. I purchased this um, actually accidentally. I bought this tractor probably five years ago or better now. Probably 2019 I would say. So yeah, five years ago. And I was just scrolling Marketplace one day. And I did not buy it how you see it. I restored it last year. I bought it. Uh, it was pretty rough. It had been sitting for years. But anyway, I was just scrolling Marketplace and I saw this tractor, pretty dilapidated, sitting uh, kind of in the high weeds and they had it listed for like $600. And so I actually went back to the listing to look in the listing and see if I could laugh react it because it was on Facebook. And I ended up reading the description and he said that that was not actually the price. He said, uh, Facebook just made him put a price and just kind of did that. So I messaged him and I said, hey, look, I'd be interested. But uh, that's a heck of a lot more than it is worth, especially to me. It did have a sleeve hitch on it. But uh, like I said, it was really rough. And this was, this was before I started my YouTube channel, I believe. I was not super mechanically inclined yet at that point I could do simple stuff but this was on the edge of my realm I ended up striking up a deal with him I think I paid $225 for it and he brought it uh, part way to my house I met him well, not quite halfway and I brought it home I just backed up to his truck and we pushed it across straight into my truck didn't check anything over on it and when I brought it home and tried to unload it everything was froze up it would not steer I had to drag the front end sideways 
to take it where I wanted it because everything was froze up. The spindles in the front axle was froze up. The hydraulic lever was froze up. Everything on this tractor was locked up except for the engine and the transmission. And I'm not sure how the engine was not because it was fairly tight. I mean, this tractor didn't burn oil. I called a friend of mine as soon as I got it and told him, hey, I got this tractor. You want to come over tomorrow and help me get it running? And this was during the start of the China virus. Everything was shut down. Nobody had anything to do. Uh, no school, no jobs. Uh, everything was shut down and closed. So he came over the next day and we spent literally all day. We got this thing running and it's probably one of the only ones that I actually did right. When I got this tractor running, I rebuilt the carb, replaced points, condenser, coil, uh, all the fuel line. We went through the fuel pump. Uh, like I said, the carburetor, we cleaned the tank. Um, we did everything to this tractor uh, that you should do when you get one running that I no longer do because I'm lazy and it's too expensive. Got it running in one day, ran great. I didn't end up getting the hydraulic lift fixed that day. I had to do that later. But we spent hours beating on the spindles trying to get them out. And finally, we were successful. And uh, I used it as my main tractor after that until about a year and a half ago, maybe two years now when the engine gave up the ghost um, i knew when i bought it that the engine needed some work well after i bought it not when i bought it but the valve springs were collapsed so much it had been rebuilt before not bored or anything just refreshed but the valve springs were not done anything with and this thing had so many hours on that engine that the valve springs were like a half an inch, I think, shorter than they're supposed to be. So once this engine got hot and you started getting some carbon running down the valve stems and then you'd start letting it cool down and the carbon started getting a little gooey, the valve springs wouldn't pull the valves shut anymore. So the tractor would just lose compression and would not run at all. And after a while, it got to the point where it just wouldn't even start anymore. Because for a little while, if I let it cool down for a couple days, I could get it started again. Didn't like it, but it would. But uh, it got to the point where it just would not start at all anymore. So last summer, I rebuilt the engine completely. It's board 10 over, cranks 10 under, new valves, springs, seats, guides, the whole nine yards. Everything in the engine is brand spanking new. And obviously I painted it, put those three ribs on it and a new seat. I actually haven't really used it much, if any. Since then, I think I've got like an hour on it. But I do still keep in touch a little bit with the guy I bought it from. And he is quite impressed with how it looks now, which so am I. Going to be a little bit depressing to use it now, but that's okay. Another quick neat little fact the day after i bought it i put those bar tires specifically on it and those are the exact same bar tires still on it i've been through several sets of front tires i had switched out the set of turfs that was on it at one point for a set that held air and then i put some five ribs on it and now it's got three ribs on it and it had another set of turfs in between there somewhere so it's uh, had the same weights and rear tires since I put them on. I actually didn't put the weights on for two or three years, probably two years, until I started snow plowing with it and I put weights and chains on it. This is a 1975 214 hydraulic lift. Uh, I got this one. I think this was one of the last 200 series that I got for my collection. I had the 10, 12, and 16 and I was looking for the 14 hydraulic lift but it had to be a 75 and I had listed some other stuff and I had a guy message me and want to trade me this tractor with turf tires and a mower deck no other attachments 
for a 112 hydraulic lift, an 80 cart, and a snow blower I had, and I told him no way in hell, and asked him how much he would take for the tractor, and I think he told me like four or six hundred bucks, something like that, and uh, I told him, okay, I, I'd be interested in buying it, where are you located, and he told me he was in Iowa. So I told him if he was willing to come from Iowa to trade, I would trade him those for it. And he did. He drove out one day from Iowa, brought me this tractor, and uh, got a 112, an 80 cart, and a snowblower. I don't know any of the history of it before that, but uh, I have learned more recently why he wanted rid of it. Uh, to start with, it's got the incorrect engine in it. It is supposed to have a different engine, 475, and when I got it, it had all the later tins. So it was probably the engine that was in this tractor blew up or something and somebody just swapped it. I'm thinking that the stator is bad. I put a new voltage regulator on it and it still doesn't charge. It's never charged since I've owned it. Hydraulic lift does work good. It's got something goofy going on in the clutch, but I'm not too worried about that at this point in time. I've used it for the last two years to till the garden, and uh, as you see, it's still got the tiller, so it's still on tilling duty. I do plan to do some work to it eventually. I'd like to repaint it, because the paint job that's on it doesn't look super great. And I would also like, eventually, to do something with the engine. I'm not sure if I'm gonna rebuild that one or refresh that one because it does not burn any oil really. Or I, I had originally wanted to buy another 1975 214 and just switch engines, but I have not decided how far I wanna go on that yet. Other than that, I don't really know much about it. It does have an hour meter on it, but it's never been hooked up since I bought it. It's always been unhooked. It's got 954 hours. I am wondering if that's how many hours it had before they swapped the engine and they never hooked it back up. I don't really know. So I'll put a new one in when I do something with it. But uh, like, that's pretty much all I know about it. This is a 1975 John Deere 212 hydraulic lift. Uh, the engine's currently out. It does have one, it came with one. It is over in the shop. I'm working on rebuilding it. I just actually started. I bought this tractor uh, a good four years ago, I'm saying, when I was wanting the whole 200 series set in hydraulic lift. I bought this tractor before I wanted first year of production and at the time, if I'd have known it was a 75, if I'd have paid attention, I would not have bought it. Uh, the 75s are a really big pain to get the platform off of because the brake pedal is set up far differently. I picked this tractor up in Michigan. Uh, the listing said that it burned a little bit of oil, but was not too bad, and it ran good. Came with a mower deck, if I remember right, and some other stuff. It came with a plastic yard cart, which I still have laying around somewhere. It's kind of junky. I gave it to a friend of mine to use with the hoopty, which is laying around here somewhere also. I went, bought it, brought it home. And when I brought it home, I tried to mow around the house a couple of times. And uh, it burned about half the engine oil that was in it. So I parked it, have not used it since and uh, solenoid went out a couple of years ago, well, probably only a year ago. Until then, I had started it occasionally, let it run for five minutes to keep it running. So right now I'm in the process of getting ready to restore it this spring. So keep your eyes peeled for those videos. I actually just edited and uploaded video number one, uh, which was just disassembly of the engine. So, again, that's really, really all the backstory I got. I don't know where the man got it that I got it from, but uh, 
I bought it up in Michigan, and I don't even remember what I paid for it anymore. This is a 1975 John Deere 210 hydraulic lift. I bought it uh, right shortly after the 216 sometime, maybe maybe a few months after the 216. And uh, I think between the two of these I had bought a 300 also. And I did end up already selling that. I bought it to resell. This tractor was completely original paint when I bought it. Still is. The only thing not original is the hood that's on it. That's the original hood for it. Uh, when I got it, I was planning on restoring it eventually. Now that I know it's original, I no longer plan to do that. So it's going to get its original hood back. I do need to go through the engine because it is shot. I bought it from a guy up north somewhere. I do not remember where in the heck I bought it. I think I give 220 bucks for it or something like that. And uh, it had the same tires that are on it. Not the exact same tires, but same tread. But they were loaded with calcium when I bought it. And I can't recall if it had wheel weights or not. I don't think that it did. But I bought it, got it running, used it for several weeks. And the engine burned so much oil that it eventually just gave up the ghost. It coughed, spit and sputtered, backfired and died on me one day and wouldn't start back up, so I just parked it. And I've kind of been robbing some pieces, parts off it since then. I took some electrical stuff, like key switch I pulled out of it. I didn't take anything major off of it. The seat is still sitting on it, but it's pulled off for some reason. I don't remember why I did that. It's mostly complete. Um, I'll be rebuilding the engine in it at some point, but not yet. Maybe next winter. Not sure. We'll see what else is on the agenda. I do not know uh, where that guy bought it. It had been sitting in his shed, he said, for like five or ten years since he'd last used it. Uh, he might have been the second owner of it. I do not know. I don't think he ever told me. It uh, came with a few things. I don't even remember what. I think a mower deck and maybe a couple other attachments. I think it did, or it did have a sleeve hitch on it when I bought it. And its sleeve hitch is still, still around here somewhere. This is a 1977 John Deere 208. Uh, this was the last... 200 series I bought for my collection. Uh, it was one of the hardest to find in decent shape first year and uh, close enough by decent price. I still overpaid. I think I give $550 for this tractor. I was just at that point giving up. I couldn't find another one. This one was in decent shape and so I went and got it. The man I bought it from did not have too much information on it. He had used it as a lawnmower for several years until he got, I believe it was a 455 he got and started mowing with. And I did buy it running. He had kept it running, but it did not run good. It does not have power still. I mean, it's gutless. I did go through the carburetor when I got it, and that helped but it does not have a lot of power even for an eight horse i don't think this tractor has three or four horse right now and it's been several months since i've run it uh, i do need to do some work to it get it back out get it running properly so i can use it and play with it like i said i do not know where he got it he was not the original owner i do not know if he bought it from the original owner or if he was third owner or what the deal was I went and picked this up and uh, I got a plow with it also a one bottom plow and that was twisted I did twist it back and tried to use it once on that 420 and it did not work very well and I had somebody show up and want it so I sold it to the tractor I have not done anything with it's never been on the channel I've played with it a couple times but I like I said I haven't really done anything with it 
other than fix the carb when I got it. I don't know much of the history behind it. Uh, the guy I bought it from, like I said, he was not a collector. He just had it to use. This one here is a 1975 John Deere 200. This was going to be a hard one to find except for uh, Tim from Michigan at the time was buying and selling and doing parts and whatnot. And I had talked to him before and bought parts from him before. He knew I was looking for one of these tractors and when he got it in on trade, he listed it and let me know that he had one. And I went and bought it pretty much immediately. I think I had agreed on $300 with him. It did run and drive. I got up there, loaded it up, and kicked the rear tire to make sure it was secure in the bed of my truck, and the whole rear end wiggled around. He said that he did not know anything about that, and I didn't even have to ask him. He knocked 50 bucks off the price right away just because of that. My guess is the rear end is just loose. The bolts aren't tight, but I do not know. I brought it home, parked it in a barn, and I have not done anything with it. I just have not had the ambition for it. It is original paint. I think he bought it from the second owner. It was traded into his dealership. So I do not believe that it's a one owner machine before me. But it is original paint. You see it's got the dealer sticker right here on the front of the hood. It's got the original tires all around, I do believe. Uh, original seats still on it. I have two helper springs sitting on the seat of it. Uh, I'm not sure which of these tractors is going to get a helper spring and then I'll just have an extra. I was originally going to put one on each of them, but I don't think I'm going to do that any longer. One of these tractors will get a helper spring. The other one will not. Probably the 200 will get one and the 208 won't. Possibly the other way around since this tractor is all original. Still have not decided. Uh, when I bought this tractor, I also bought a 43C center blade, gave $400 for the center blade, which was top dollar at the time. I have not checked the prices lately because I now have two of them. But I had not been able to get my hands on one and I really wanted one and he had one. So when I picked this up, I grabbed the center blade he had also. Like I said, I did not get a ton of backstory on this tractor, but he did ask me, since I told him I was going to restore it, if I would paint around or not use that hood so I could keep the dealer sticker. I am not going to restore it anymore since it is original. I have come to my senses. And uh, I think anybody that buys one of these tractors original should not paint it, uh, keep it original. Uh, they're more collectible that way, uh, especially the 200 series. Uh, there's so many of them. Once they've been repainted, it's just another 200 series. Uh, if it's original paint, though, that's got a little bit of something going for it. Right here, we have a 1967 Gravely 430. I did not anticipate owning one of these. I really only wanted a 432 and an 814. But last spring, an auction came up with three Gravelys, and this one was there, but not advertised. Uh, there was a 20G, I want to say, and a 424, and I went and looked around, and this was sitting there too, and it was the one I was the most interested in. The 424 had a Onan engine on it, which I do not like, and uh, this had the Kohler. So I went to the auction, and the 20G would not start when I uh, went to the auction a week before to look but during the auction they claimed that it was a running mowing tractor so it brought more than I wanted to pay looking back I should have bought it I think it only brought three or four hundred bucks but I did not have a lot of money that day and I wanted these uh, there was this one and some other attachments that I was wanting to watch I did bid on the 20G but I did not buy it. I should have, like I said, but I did not. Uh, this one was the next one to sell, and I bid $100 on it, 
and no one else bid. So I won this one for $100. It did not have the front brush hog or anything on it. It had zero attachments and the hood for it's right there. I put the brush hog on to use. Uh, I did end up buying the 424 also. I got it for $50 and it had a mower deck. <laughs> uh, I did end up bringing it home and selling it for $200 to a friend after finding out it was original. I bought it for parts for this one and uh, didn't have the heart after finding out the story on it. While I was at the auction, I was talking to some of the family members. I did ask if the man collected and they said, no, he did not. Everything he had, he bought brand new and he used. So none of this was collector's items from his auction. So this tractor was bought brand new in 1967 in Worcester, Ohio, and never left the property until I bought it last year. So I bought it from the original owner's estate, and I am the second owner. It is 100% original, except for a few things. I'm not sure about the seat because I'm not that big of a gravely guy. I think it's supposed to have a different one, but I don't know. This tire was replaced and some of the wiring stuff was done in it. Other than that, it's pretty original. I'm not sure if that box is original to it. It was sitting on a shelf, and the guy that bought the shelf said I could have that. He didn't need it, since it was for the tractor that I had purchased. I also tried to buy some other stuff at that auction. They had a front drive kit with a sickle bar and a snow plow. Snow plow I wasn't really interested in. I did try and buy the front drive kit, I bid it up to like 200 bucks, but like I said, I did not have a lot of money that day to spend, and I was trying to spend it on something else at the time, if I remember right. And so, I would have bid much higher on all the Gravely stuff if I had had some more money, and I'd have probably bought every bit of it, but I did not. So, here we are. I did keep this tractor because I do like it, I got it running on the channel so you can go back and check all those videos out that I've used this tractor and getting it running. I kept it because it was a Kohler, it was a good tractor, it does not burn any oil, it does not charge the battery so I do need to put a new stator in it. It's got a new voltage regulator in it already. I think he had put that in. It was in there when I bought it. I do not leave the hood on it for the reason the wiring harness in this tractor looks sketchy at best. It looks like it could burst into flames at any second and I don't leave any batteries hooked up. But this hood does not have a spot in it to get to the battery which goes right here. So if I put the hood on it I cannot disconnect the battery. So I built these arms to hold the dash still and I just don't leave the hood on it. Has been a pretty good tractor. I've done a few things to it now. I did put a snow plow bracket on it and a snow plow for the winter, even though we didn't get any snow enough to use it. I did put a front drive kit on it. It did have these brackets on it when I bought it. So it had been running uh, the front drive kit. More than likely this tractor was bought brand new with the front drive kit and the sickle bar because the other tractor had the mower deck. Uh, the other tractor was a 1971 or two and it was also bought new. Uh, the PTO on this is super worn out which tells me it probably ran a sickle bar most of its life because those are not nice to anything. Uh, they shake and vibrate and just beat the heck out of everything. So more than likely this was bought to run a sickle bar and that's all it did its whole life until it was parked. It did have some blocks of wood on the pedals when I bought it. So my guess was after he retired it, he started letting his grandkids drive it or something. I do not have a ton other than that on it. Uh, I do know it was bought brand new, uh, never left the property. I'm the second owner, it's completely original. Uh, nothing's really been done to it. it. does leak a lot of oil, so you can tell that it sat for a while. 
It did not do that when I bought it. I got it and it didn't start leaking until I started using it, which tells me the seals were dried out. And when I started using them, they said, no, no, we're still tired. So I just leave an oil pan under it. It leaks out of the transmission, not the engine. So I just kind of ignore it. This tractor is not for sale. As much as I would love to see it go to someone else, I do love this tractor. It has done a lot of good work for me, and I am the second owner, so I can't really let it go. As far as attachments go, this is the tiller that's on my 214 currently. I believe, if I remember correctly, I got this tiller when I bought the 1969 112 patio that John, aka Maniac Mower, currently has. It was on that tractor, and I did want the tiller. It's one of the reasons I bought the tractors. Uh, I've used it for a while since I had it, and uh, here it is, still in use. This is the mower deck for my 1971 140H3. I'll put some pictures of the tractor here also. We're not going to go and do it in person because it is currently a part, which is a whole other YouTube video. I am replacing the stator in it because it was not charging the battery. Uh, this is 1971 140H3, like I said. I bought it last fall. I actually did not get any backstory on it whatsoever. Uh, the guy I bought it from had put these goofy looking uh, oversized tires on it, which I have now put correct size back on it. Uh, I bought it. He said that it did not charge the battery very well and reverse was weak. And so I picked it up and decided to use it. Um, I'm not too worried about if it doesn't charge. It's not too hard to do, except for on this tractor, which has the wrong engine in it. It still has a 14 horse, I believe. I actually haven't even looked at the casting on the block since it's been out. But it was out of a different tractor, clearly. I traded two John Deere 300s for it that were non-running. They were in my parts or project row. It's been a fairly decent tractor since I've owned it. It does not like the cold. It doesn't run very good until it warms up. But when I bought it, I did mow with it and uh, didn't have very much trouble at all since then. Like I said, I don't have any backstory on it and I've only had it for six months, so I don't really know a whole lot about it. So that's all I can currently tell you about that tractor. So back here is my attachment hoard. I'm gonna go over some of the larger stuff, such as this 80 cart. It is an original 80 cart that I got from the original owner's grandson. He bought it brand new with a 1973, I wanna say, 110 John Deere, or it might've been a 112 he bought it with. Uh, the guy I got this cart from said that he didn't need it, didn't use it enough, and it was just in his way. And he needed an engine that I had for a tractor he was fixing. And so I traded him a running 10 horse Kohler out of a 112 for this cart. I didn't use it for a long time because I really didn't want to scratch it up or anything, being original. But I have started to lightly use it now. You see it's still got some dirt in it. I hauled a load of dirt with it and I hauled a load of gravel with it. And just a few odds and ends like that. Other than that, I haven't got it to work. I just, I picked it up. Didn't even really mean to have it, but I can't really sell it. I would like to keep it with some of my original tractors. I think it'll be nice with maybe the 317 at a show or something else I have original, maybe the 200. Back over here is my turf groom. Model 136 Lawn Sweeper. I had bought a John Deere Lawn Sweeper, but it did not work as good as I wanted. And I went to an auction with my uncle. He wanted to look at a tractor. And this was sitting there. And I thought, you know, that looks like pretty nice when I go up to 50 bucks or something on it. And uh, when it came time to sell this, I bid 
I think two dollars and uh, brought it home put it together and the bristles on the broom are pretty much clapped they're all broke off and some missing so it doesn't work the best but it is pretty good it's a heck of a lot better than some of the other ones I've had I did put bar tires on it it just had wheelbarrow tires when I bought it I actually didn't want that tread pattern but that's what they sent me when I ordered the other ones and I just didn't complain about it uh, I love this lawn sweeper. If you ever, ever have the chance to buy one of these, buy it. Uh, this arm is supposed to be flipped around and you pull a rope to dump it. But I decided that I was fat and lazy, so I put a winch on it and uh, I hook it up to the tractor battery and push the button right there, right behind the tractor, and it dumps. Also, this has a rope like the old trip plows. You pull the rope and it turns on, you pull it again and it turns off. Uh, actually what you're doing is there's a knot in the rope and you pull it through and get it stuck over here and then pull it again and it comes back through. Best lawn sweeper I've ever owned. If I found another one at the right price I would buy another one. Uh, it does take up quite a bit of space but this is the best lawn sweeper I've ever had. Unlike traditional lawn sweepers it's got a fixed drawbar so all the weight of the load is on the drive tires there's no casters on the back and it does take some effort to pull this thing you get it loaded and start going through some thick grass and you're trying to cruise along which you kind of have to to throw the grass to the back man it it pulls some power this is the acreage estate rake that i use with the sweeper uh, i borrowed a friend of mine's and he didn't want to sell it, but he let me borrow it. And I absolutely had to have one after that. So after like a year of not being able to find one and borrowing his occasionally, I was finally able to find this one. And I think I paid $120 for it or something, uh, which is a pretty good deal. And uh, I absolutely love this rake. Again, another must have for playing around but getting work done in the yard it's amazing it's a de-thatcher and a rake back here we'll go over a few things obviously i have a ton of stuff if i went over it all we'd be here all day uh, the first 43c blade is the one i got from tim in michigan the other one i picked up a year or two ago uh, i've never used it <laughs> I got some. I got a snow blower back there. I bought it before I even got to 216. I would sell it. It is pretty much perfect. It is probably the best shaped snow blower I've ever seen, and I think I paid fifty dollars for it. But I would not sell it for fifty dollars. That is for sure. I did use it once. I did one pass up and down the driveway with the 216, and I don't like snow blowers. I'd rather a snow plow. So I haven't used it since. Uh, I've got back blades, tillers, uh, plows, discs, chisels, cultivators, uh, planters. Uh, i got front PTO for a 100 series, 200 series, basically the gear drive tractors. Uh, this is the Gravely snow plow that I used last winter, another planter. Uh, I've got a number four log splitter. I picked that up about a year and a half ago with that 43C blade. I think I give like four or five, six hundred bucks for it, I don't even remember. I've never used it, but uh, I have it. More snow plows, mower decks, discs. Uh, those are the sickle bars for the Gravely that I use. I got a sickle bar over here I picked up for, I don't know, like 25 bucks at an auction a year or two ago. I bought this to put on the 400. Now that the 400 is usable again, I can actually start mounting it. For anybody who wonders, right here, this massive turd is a custom, clearly, Craftsman lawnmower. It is widened. It's got canopy, obviously. It's got this rack on the back. Uh, it's pulley swapped also. It does cruise right along when it's not broken. Since we've owned this, um, man, it is, it's been broken more than I've been able to use it. It is a fun little toy to have. When it's not broken, it'll cruise right along. I could tow with it even though I shouldn't because the transmission is just a side shift crappy transmission. 
So it's not really meant to pull anything, especially pulley swap, but I do anyway. This has been a pretty good unit other than the transmission. I've broken off three axle shafts with it, and I think I'm on the third or fourth transmission once I replace it. Um, I think fourth once I replace it. I first stripped out the shifters, and it was probably the previous owner because with when they're not pulley swapped, you're supposed to shift without the clutch. And uh, we think that's what he was doing after pulley swapping it. And so the shift keys were worn out after I replaced the transmission because I had it apart a couple times and could not get it to stop doing that. I went ahead and just put another trans in it. And that one lasted a little while. Uh, it's been the longest lasting one. It worked good. Uh, it's what I broke several axles with. And then more recently, now that I've got a machined axle from a machine shop that's all one piece, never been welded on or anything like that. The last thing I did was I actually broke the transmission, uh, the housing of the transmission. I snapped it in half, pulling a snowmobile. I tried to use the two transmissions, which were the same on the outside, but different on the inside. I tried to use some parts from both and make one but that did not work. Uh, it should have worked, but it didn't. Basically all I did was take the old transmission and put the new shift key in it from the transmission I broke in half. And that's currently what's in it, but that didn't work for some reason. So I need to buy another trans for it again, but uh, it is a fun little toy when it's usable. Last, but certainly not least, this is a 1968 112 hydraulic lift side tag. Uh, this was one of the first tractors I ever bought, garden tractor wise. I've had this for probably six or seven years now. I bought it and immediately started restoring it. I was looking for a Kohler 112 hydraulic, but this surfaced and I just went and picked it up because I didn't know any better. Like I said, the first tractor I had, I didn't really know much. Uh, I wasn't even driving it at that point. I was in middle school when I got this tractor. Or it might have been high school, I don't even remember. It's been a while since I've got this, though. I decided I'd restore it. And so I brought it home, started taking it apart. And over the last several years since I've owned it. I had gotten it most of the way sandblasted and most of it primed. Last summer I finally finished getting everything sandblasted except for a few pieces primed and then everything painted. It is finally making some progress. It's not really one I'm interested in keeping so I'm not sure how far I'm going to go with it. But I had every nut and bolt out of this tractor. Everything was primed, painted, sandblasted first, of course. I put these tires on it. Uh, the guy I bought it from was supposedly the second owner. He had bought it in the 70s, I want to say, he said. Mid-70s. And he had bought it. It was original, and he just threw a paint job on it to make it look like a brand new one. Wished he hadn't done that, but probably wouldn't have made any difference. I would have probably still repainted it because I didn't know any better back then. It does have the junk comps of HH100, but I'm going to rebuild it, so hopefully it'll be okay. He said that he was just mowing with it one day and it just up and died and would not start back up. He said it wouldn't turn over or do anything, so I'm guessing the key switch went bad on him. He said he parked it and he had, I think, a 318 or 316 or something like that that he started mowing with after that. So he was the second owner. Bought it up north somewhere. I can't remember where all these locations are anymore. I'm going to hopefully finish it up in the next two or three years. Um, it's not really big for me to get this one done. I'm not going to use it. I don't really want to keep it. 
if somebody wanted to buy it how it is I would be overjoyed to sell it if I could get back out of it what I have in it the problem is I have a lot in it so far because I've done so much work already uh, I pretty much have everything I need to put it together the only things that I still need to spend money on is taking the engine to the machine shop and having it bored and the electrical stuff I'll probably have to buy a few new things uh, like key switch I'll have to buy um, I'd re I'll rewire it myself so I won't really need to have a wiring harness bought but it is almost done it's got not new tires uh, all four tires are used you cannot buy those anymore and I wanted those from the day I bought it that's what I wanted on it but you can't buy them new or at least you couldn't when I checked so when I found a good set on a tractor I had I snagged them put new tubes in them and put them on these rims and then I just put a set of Carlisle uh, what are these power tracks 238-5012 on the back end here which look good it is currently set narrow because well I wanted more space in here while I was working There's a bunch of parts over there for it. This is the 71140 in its current state. Uh, Engineless. The engine's sitting over here. It has the 10 amp stator, which I'd like to switch, so I have to get a different flywheel. This is a bunch of its parts. The flywheel is sitting right there. This is the engine out of the 212. I just got it apart today. And all of its parts are right here. That's the Brindley Garden Cart that came on the 210 we discussed earlier. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and uh, make sure to let me know in the comments that you definitely enjoyed this video. This was definitely a tedious process to try to get all the backstory for all of these tractors. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you're not already, subscribe. If you want to see anything specific, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Let me know how you liked the video. Uh, we might do one like this once a year and just do the backstories of my newest tractors. Not sure, but uh, you guys wanted one of these update videos once a month. So this is what we have. Again, thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.